In this video, you're gonna find out what's the difference between the right versus wrong social media marketing clients. Coming up. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in again with another video. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some tips and tricks to avoid the wrong clients and how to recognize which ones are the right clients for you to work with. We all know that having the right clients can propel your business up and forward and having the wrong clients will bury your business. So I'm gonna share with you my three biggest tips for you to be on the lookout when you're looking for uh, the right clients for you and how to distinguish what are the wrong clients, all right? So number one, I would definitely put down Attitude. I can't stress enough how important the right attitude really is when you're looking to get clients. All right. So number one, I will put down attitude. Okay. And you might say, "What do you mean the right attitude? What 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 does that have to do with you know me getting clients?" Well, look, you can get a client, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can get results for the client. And that doesn't necessarily mean that a client will be easy to work with. So the key things to look out is number one, the attitude. So right from the get-go, you can pretty much get an idea of what it really looks like to work with that person. Just because they hired you doesn't mean that they're going to leave you to do your job as a professional. They're telling you what you should be doing when they have no clue, which is why they actually hired you. The wrong client will try to micromanage you, will try to impose their, you know, their beliefs and ideas on you without even listening to what you've got to offer. They will just make your life a living hell. Okay, usually it's not worth to work with clients like that. I have dropped big deals from companies that I could potentially work with and I was literally able to tell right from the first phone call that this client will be a no-no for me. Right, I'm talking contracts that are over 10K a month in retainers, right? So this is what the right attitude is. They would leave you alone to do your work as a professional. You'll do consultations with them you know, on a month-to-month -month basis, maybe you you would even send them quick updates every, you know, 10 days or so, but they will leave you, they'll recognize that you're the professional, you understand what you're doing, okay? They won't try to impose their ideas and beliefs on you on how things should be done. That's why they hired you, right? So it wouldn't make sense if they, if they tried to do otherwise. Now, number two, you have to remember this, okay? It's always easier to move money than it is to spend money. And I'm gonna explain what that means. The person or the company is already spending money elsewhere, but they're just not optimizing, you know, for the best of their ability. So that's where you come in, right? So the amount of money that a business is spending on marketing could be very easily replaced with a different strategy, which is what you're gonna offer them. Right? If they're spending money on newspapers and billboards and stuff like that, you have to let them know that this is just throwing money in the trash. And you're the one who's gonna let them know that. You're the one who's gonna design, design a strategy for them. You're the one who's gonna plant the seed in their head for them to start thinking about switching that from whatever they're doing to what you would prefer them to do. Right, So they can be paying you. So number two will be, Right, so it's easier to move money than it is to spend money. That's really where you come in. You're gonna show them where they're wasting their money. If you notice that they're spending reckless amount of money on newspapers, billboards, and whatnot, right, you can let them know you have a perfect strategy for them, and you can obviously go into your pitch and explain what their strategy might be for their business. Okay, so that's number two. It's easier, remember this, to move than it is to spend money. If somebody's not spending money at all, their business is just existing. They either get ongoing business from referrals, word of mouth, but they've not yet decided to spend money on marketing. It'll be a little bit difficult to convince that person that Facebook ads or Instagram or this and that, it's the right way to go for them because you, you'll literally have to educate them on the subject. Whereas if somebody's already spending money elsewhere, way easier to move them. They already know the importance of marketing. You just have to let them know what could be the most efficient way for them to spend their money on. All right, and number three is you start with businesses you know for a fact that you can help, okay? 
and this is the bottom line. You don't go into any business that you're not sure that you can help 100%. That's the mistake that I made in the past. When I started my agency about a year and a half ago, I picked the wrong niche, okay? I went into a niche that, I can't even remember what it was. Home security, that's right, home security. I didn't know how to, how the hell to get them leads. I We hired him, so I run a lead generation agency, so predominantly, we don't do any um, management or anything, anything like that, so we tend to just get straight to the point and give him a price for a certain amount of leads, right? So because of my ability to sell very well, I was able to close two clients in the first month and I didn't know how to deliver results. I was like, I picked the wrong client. The guys were lovely to work with. Like the attitude was there, right? I'm like, yes, I got my first two clients. One of them was already spending money and the other one I had to convince why Facebook ads would work a lot better for them. I didn't even care whether I was able to deliver on my promises that I make on the call or, uh, or I couldn't, okay? I was like, as long as they sign and they transfer the money, I don't give a damn, okay? But that's the wrong strategy. You have to know what you're doing when it comes to um, the, uh, you know, the niche. So picking a niche is very important. There's so many niches that you can pick from. There's easier ones to work with. There's a little bit harder ones to work with. I suggest you start with like restaurants, gyms, chiropractors, stuff like that, right? These are, these are the easiest ones to work with. But at the same time, you have to recognize that because of social media marketing is becoming so popular, a lot more people and kids, even kids nowadays, they're opening up agencies and they start bombarding these, these guys that I've just mentioned, restaurants, you know, gyms, chiros, right? They get bombarded on a daily basis with emails, phone calls, people walk in the doors, right? And it's becoming harder and harder in terms of landing those type of clients because they're so used to it. Like for example, when I went to home security, it was a no brainer pretty much. It wasn't hard to, for me to sign clients. It was the next part, it was the, the results part that I kind of screwed up on. But you live and you learn, man. And once again, if you're looking to start your own digital agency, or maybe you're a business that, you know, want to have more clients coming in through the doors, you can contact me. The links will be down in the description. Also, you can download my ebook on how to fire your boss in 2018. The link, again, will be down in the description. If this was of value to you, make sure that you give it a like. Okay, you subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, just drop them down below. Let me know how you find in the content and I will see you soon.